Hi, my name is Kim, and today we're going to talk about herons and egrets. Welcome to McHenry County Conservation District's Wonders of the Wild. Herons and egrets are related species that are both considered to be wading birds. That means they have long legs and long beaks, and they're typically in shallow waters, wading through the water. Their feet are also spread out so that they can walk on top of mud and not sink through with their long legs. And what they're looking for is anything to eat that they can catch. Frogs, fish, aquatic insects, things that you would find in a shallow marsh. Great blue herons and egrets look like they're very slow and deliberate while they're looking for their food. They hunt quietly and slowly, but when they're ready to strike, they have incredible quickness with their head and neck and beak to be able to catch their food. Herons and egrets are migrators, so we don't see the egrets around all winter long. You might occasionally see a great blue heron out in the winter time, and that's because they're short migrators. They don't fly very far, so they could actually come back on a warm spell where they can find food and water. Most herons and egrets migrate back to the same spot for their nesting location and mate with the same partner. But they do need to reform a bond, and this is called pair bonding. One way that that's done is the male will bring a stick and present it to the female, and she has then the choice whether to accept or refuse the stick. As awkward as it may look, herons and egrets nest in trees. They're in rookeries, which are communal living areas of many nests put together, sometimes over a hundred. And it's not just herons and egrets there, there's also cormorants as well. When they are nesting, they will lay two to four eggs and may get two to four young to hatch. They'll feed them the same as other birds do, regurgitating the food that they went out and connect collected beforehand. And then the young will need 28 to 32 days before they're ready to leave the nest. Sometimes people get confused with herons, egrets, and sandhill cranes. But a crane is actually an entirely different bird. It's taxonomically different. It nests on the ground in marshes. But they do look similar because of their long legs and long necks. The easiest way to tell them apart when they're flying is if you look up, a great blue heron will fold its neck in almost like it looks like a pouch from a pelican. The great egret does the exact same thing, it just is bright white. Now the crane cranes its neck outward, keeping it straight, so you have a long neck in front and the long legs trailing behind. There are two other herons that we find in the area. They're not nearly as long-legged or as long-necked, but they're still considered herons. And those would be the green heron, which has a bright green on its back and bright orange feet, a little bit of brown on its head. The other one would be the black-crowned night heron, which is not nearly as common, and it has a black cap and a white face. Great egrets were once hunted for their beautiful plumes. During mating time, the males will have particularly long, brilliant white feathery feathers. Rather than just find them on the ground, they were so coveted, especially for women's hats in the early 1900s, that people hunted them for those feathers. The the fact that we almost lost the great egret to the hat trade is one of the reasons why the Migratory Bird Act was enacted so that we could protect birds such as the great egret. Thank you for watching 
And don't forget to respect the plants and animals in your local conservation areas and watch for us next time on McHenry County Conservation District's Wonders of the Wild.